Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. Today we have another lesson in Mega Goal 6. But before we start uh, the lesson of today, let's take a quick, a quick overview for the previous lesson, which was grammar. In the previous lesson, we started with explaining the meaning of the unit, which is beauty is only skin deep. We talked about that and we said it means that the beauty is something artificial. It's something doesn't reflect the inner beauty of the people and their personal trait. This is the grammar lesson that we have learned together in the previous lesson on page 36. It is divided into four parts. In these four parts, we focused on the noun clauses and its relation with the word that in the first point. And after that, we talked about the noun clause after verbs. We mentioned that noun clauses come after the verbs and we have here list of verbs like believe, complain, decide, discover, dream and so on. We defined the noun clause as a statement or a clause that come within the statement itself. So it's a dependent clause that is used to make a statement within a statement. So it has more than one way uh, of usage. In the first, uh, the first one is it comes after the verb. As we have here, I noticed that she didn't put any makeup on today. Here we have the verb. Then the noun clause comes after the verb. The word that, as you can notice here, is put between brackets. What does that mean? It means that we have the option to use the word that to keep it or to take it out. So either ways are correct. I noticed that she didn't put any makeup on today or I noticed she didn't put any makeup on today. Let's put in mind that usually in speaking, people take out the word that. Then after that, we move to the second or the third part where we talked about the noun clauses after adjectives. We have here lists of, adjecti list of adjectives like afraid or be afraid, be amazed, be aware, be certain and so on. We said that the adjective follows the verb be and the verb be as we all know is am, is, are in the present and was or, or were for the past. So one example for uh, this situation is she doesn't seem to be aware that her dress is no longer in style. She doesn't seem to be aware. This is an adjective and here we have the noun close. The third situation where we use the noun clause is as a subject as subjects of sentences. Noun clauses sometimes comes in the first or at the beginning of the sentence. A sentence can have a noun clause as its subject. These sentences usually begin with it. So it is often start with it. For example, it is a fact that, it is funny that, it's obvious that, it's possible that, and so on. The first example is, it is surprising that toothbrushes only became common in the 20th century. This is a sentence that has started with a noun close. After that, we had some exercises. We started with the first one, which is A. Complete each sentence with a verb plus that and be sure to use the correct form of the verb. In some cases, more than one answer is possible, and the answers of the following sentences is as shown here on this slide. After that, we move to the second exercise, exercise B, read and respond to each item. You are asked here in each sentence to respond to every command or to every request. The first one, talk about something you saw. Number two, talk about a complaint you made and so on for the rest of the uh, requests. 
we learned that we can start the sentence by using a noun clause or it can come after the verb or uh, it can be also after the subject the, the adjective of the sentence and we use that way in each one or in most of these sentences for example we have the, the, the answer for the first one talk about something you saw recently and the answers for the rest of the sentences as shown here in this slide then we move to the workbook in the workbook we have exercise C circle the correct words to complete the sentences here we have words or verbs that are used with the word that and we have two options in each sentence we were asked to use or to choose one of these two answers and the answers of uh, the correct sentences are as shown here in this slide now let's go to our lesson today on page 38 we have a conversation lesson we have a conversation lesson but firstly let's start with the meaning of conversation what does it mean Conversation is when two people or more are talking to each other, they are discussing something, they are sharing their opinions or their ideas about some topic. This is called a conversation. Today we have a conversation between two friends, Sophie and Anne. And it is related to the topic of this unit, beauty is only skin deep. They talked about their appearance, what should they do, what they, what they shouldn't, and so on. They discussed many things. I want you now to pick up your pens, listen carefully to the conversation, underline the new words, and try to guess the meanings of the new expressions. For example, we have here some expressions that are written in blue. I want you to listen carefully so you can guess the meaning of these uh, expressions from within the context. Now let's go ahead and listen to the discussion or the conversation of the two friends. Page 38. Four. Conversation. I'd like to speak with a manager. I'm the manager. How can I help you? Look at my hair. It's lovely. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I am very upset with this haircut. It's by far the worst haircut I've ever gotten. The hairstylist didn't listen to me at all. This is not the style I asked for. I'm fit to be tied. I'm sorry you didn't get what you were expecting, but I have to tell you, I saw you when you walked in. I did a double take when I saw you after the haircut. I think this style really suits you. It's a dramatic improvement. But it's too short, and it has all these layers. I look ridiculous. Not at all. You just aren't used to it. Trust me, it brings out your eyes, and it makes you look more sophisticated. You're just trying to make me feel better. No, I'm being entirely honest. You look elegant and sophisticated. I have a wedding to go to this weekend and I want it to look my best. Perfect. You're going to blow them away with your new style. You really think so? Absolutely. I'll tell you what. See what happens at the wedding. If your family and friends don't like it, come back next week, and we'll give you any haircut you want on the house. Well, okay. I guess that's fair. Okay, we have just listened to the conversation between Sophie and Anne. And firstly, let's talk about the meaning of some of the words, not the words written in blue, but other words. Then after that, we will try to explain the expressions uh, of the words or the, the expressions highlighted or written in blue. Firstly, we will start with the word upset. I am very upset. 
What is the meaning of upset? It means that you are annoyed about something. When someone says, I am upset, that means something is annoying you. You are not happy with that thing. So that makes you upset. Another word is the hair stylist. The hair stylist. It means or it refers to the person who does your hair, who changes the appearance, the way your hair looks. We call that person hair stylist. Also, we have other words like uh, sophisticated, and we have the word elegant. We have elegant and sophisticated. It means that something is looking great, it is amazing, amazing stunning, it grab, uh, grabs the attention of the other people, it is a good thing. Now let's talk about the expressions in blue. We will start with the first one. She, Sophie said, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm not going to read, I'm not going to beat around the bush. What does that mean? It means that she doesn't want to say something that she doesn't mean, or she doesn't want to say something indirectly. I'm not going to beat around the bush means I will say what I mean directly. I will say what I intend to say, okay? After that, we have here, I'm very upset with this haircut. It's by far the worst haircut I have ever gotten. By far means so far, until now. It is until now, it is so far the worst haircut I've ever gotten. Then we have unfit to be tied. And then I did a double take, blow them away on the house. We will talk about these expressions when we get to the real talk part. Now let's go to the about the conversation. We have three questions. The first question is, what was Sophie's complaint? Number two, how did Anne respond? Number three, how did Sophie's attitude change by the end of the conversation and why? You can pause the video right now, go back to the conversation, listen again, and try to find the answer for each one of them. Or you can start writing the answers from your memory and understanding of the previous conversation. Now we will go ahead and answer the first question together, which is, what was Sophie's complaint? She didn't like her haircut. She said that I have got, uh, or I have just had uh, the worst haircut ever. Uh, number two, how did Anne respond? She thinks her hair looks very nice. Number three, how did Sophie's attitude change by the end of the conversation and why? Anne convinces Sophie that her haircut looks good. She agrees to keep it as it is for a while. Let's put in mind, before we answer any questions of conversation or questions about an article or essay you read, that we shouldn't use the exact words from the conversation or from the essay. We should paraphrase these words. We should rewrite these words in our own words. We just use the idea. Use the idea, try to process it in your mind, and use your own words to write the correct answer. After that, we will, we will have the real talk part. We talked about the first, uh, uh, we talked about the first expression, which is beat around the bush, which means speak indirectly. Number two, by far, by very much, or obviously, fit to be tied means very angry, annoyed about something. Did a double take, looked again in surprise or at someone or something. Blow them away means that you impress people, make them amazed by the way you look or the way you talked about something. 
but it means impress the people and grab their attention to anything you have. Number three, uh, the, sorry, number six, the last one, on the house, it means free. So once the owner of a place or an owner of a, of a store says it's on the house, it means you can take it for free. Now we will go to this exercise on page 23 in your workbook. Exercise H is related to the previous expressions that we have just explained and talked about. I want you now, or we will now, read the sentences together. Read the words in the box and we will try to work together to put these words or these expressions in the suitable blanks. We have six expressions beating around the bush. Blow them away, by far, did a double take, fit to be tied, and the last one on the house. You all now know the meaning of each one of these expressions and how to use them. Now we have six sentences. The first one, Andrew spent Andrew spent weeks researching and preparing the project. He really wanted to impress everyone at work. And he did. He really, with his presentation. Which word, or sorry, which expression do you think is related to making people like what you think, impress people, grab their attention, and so on? The answer is, blew them away. Andrew spent weeks researching and preparing the project. He really wanted to impress everyone at work and he did. He really blew them away with his presentation. Sometimes we have keywords in each sentence once we have uh, an exercise or once we have a question. We have keywords that could help us find the answer even though if we don't know the meaning of each word in the sentence. For example, in the first one, Andrew spent weeks researching and preparing the project. He really wanted to impress. The word impress is one of the key words that could help you find the answer from the expressions in the box. Now let's go to the second one. Wow, is that, a, is that Mark? He lost so much weight that I when he walked in the room. I almost didn't recognize him. Okay, now we have two keywords. The first one is, he lost so much weight. What does that mean? That means he looks different. The second one is, I almost didn't recognize him. I almost didn't recognize him. That means I couldn't place his face in the first time. So what is the proper answer for this one? Yes, you guessed it. I did a double take. He looked different, so the person who is talking needed to look again. He did a double take when he walked in the room. I almost didn't recognize him. Number three, she was invited to a makeup gathering last week. There was sales lady they're selling makeup and she let everyone try on all the different products. It was so much fun. And she even gave everyone some lipstick. They had to buy other makeup, but even that had great prices. Okay. They had to buy other makeup, but even that had great prices. This one is, or the answer of this one is on the house. Number four, when he saw Fahad last week, Adil got the feeling that he wanted to ask him something, but Fahad was, and not being direct, Adil finally asked him what was going on, and Fahad said he wanted help with his math lessons because he was failing. Okay, now use the way of finding the keywords. Adil got the feeling that he wanted to ask him something, so there was something is not clear between, or something is not clear going on with Fahad. So the answer here is beating around, around the bush. He is not direct. 
Number five, last week, Ingrid bought a beautiful new dress to wear to wear to her sister's wedding. She wanted to show it to her mother and sister. So she left so she left it on the table and went to get them. When they came back, she screamed. There was her little brother with chocolate all over his hands and all over her new dress. She was I think this one is so obvious. The answer is fit to be tied because her brother uh, had chocolate all over her dress. And the last one is, in my opinion, having a healthy diet is the most important way to look and feel good. It is great for your skin and provides you with the energy you need. And this one is by far. So now we have answered together all these sentences and we use the right expressions in each blank. Now let's go to the last part in our lesson today. It is re related to making complaint. We learned from the conversation how Sophie wasn't happy with her haircut. She made a complaint. She talked to the other woman and she made her complaint. Today we will learn a new way of making complaint by using one of these expressions we have on the board. The first one is I'm very unhappy or I am very upset about or I am very unhappy with. Okay? Or I insist that you or I want to make a complaint. I would like to speak with the manager. I'm not at all satisfied with this situation. I'm sorry to have to say this, but this is completely unsatisfactory. This isn't what I expected, or this isn't, or this is nothing like, or this is too, okay? All these are ways of expressing your complaint about something. These are not the only correct expressions, but they are some or they are suggested for you to be used once or if you want to make a complaint about anything. This is the last part of our lesson today. Thank you all for attending and I wish you enjoy the rest of the day. Salam alaikum.